praise the Lord. Amen. We give God all the glory and praise that he has given us yet another opportunity uh, that we should meet together through this medium of the Revival TV. We thank God for this station. We thank God for the purpose of reaching out with the gospel, reaching out with the word of God through this medium. We bless his name, and I want to thank you for tuning in to this program in the name of Jesus. My name is uh, Sakayongeno. I love the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who saved my soul, cleansed me with his precious blood, and made me a child of God. And uh, on top of that, he made me a servant uh, to serve him. And so I welcome you in Jesus' name. I'm married. I'm married to Pastor in training, Sephora Ngeno, in Jesus' name. We will begin with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this moment. I thank you for the viewer that is viewing this program. I thank you, O oh God, for the listener. I thank you and I honor you. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit will minister to each one of us in these programs, O oh God. Glorify yourself and recover this program by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I'm going to share uh, the Word of God mainly on the subject of the Bride of Christ. And I'll take my key verse from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, where Apostle Paul was speaking these words uh, to the church in Corinth. Uh, the Bible says in verse 1, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, I would to God that you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul was speaking to the church or speaking uh, from his heart to the church in Corinth in this letter. Uh, when we read the passage, when we read the whole chapter, we see that there had been a people, uh, ministers who supposedly came to the church and they were claiming to be apostles, but yet in fact, they were preaching another different gospel, a different Jesus, a different spirit. And so Paul was addressing them uh, out of a godly jealousy because they looked like, the church looked like they were being swept away from the gospel that they had received from the Spirit of God that they had received through the ministry of Apostle Paul. They, 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 they were being carried away for, like to a different Jesus uh, when these false apostles came uh, to the church. And they were boastful. They were masquerading themselves as true apostles. Yet, in fact, uh, as we read there, and we find Paul saying that it's no wonder because even Satan himself, himself must quarrel or presents himself like an angel of light, yet we know he's an angel of darkness. So that is, uh, that is the, the picture we see in this 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And so Paul is saying that I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy like the jealousy of God, the holy jealousy of God was inside of Apostle Paul and he's addressing the church uh, out of that. And he says, for I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. He's speaking of the church as a bride, 
that has been espoused, that has been espoused to Christ, engaged to Christ, is speaking in that uh, uh, setting or in that understanding that the church of Jesus Christ is the bride of Christ and is jealous over that bride the way even a natural man, uh, a young man who is espoused to a fiancé, he, he has some out of the love that he has for that bride, is jealous over her, is protective over her. He wants good for her. He wants total good for her and nothing evil. It, he would not want any other man, any other uh, somebody to come around her, like to sway her mind, to take her from him. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, that is what Apostle Paul is saying. I espoused you. I engaged you to one husband. I promised you to one husband. I promised you in marriage to one husband. And I want you to remain true to that one husband. One husband. Uh, when we read in the book of uh, John, the Gospel of John, we fully understand that Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and, and, uh, and the church is the bride. L let me read that verse where John was uh, answering to a question that the Pharisees had sent to ask of him, John the Baptist. And they were asking him, who are you? Are you the Christ? Are you that the Elijah, the prophet? Who are you? And John, in answer, was saying, I am not the Christ, I am not Elijah, I am not this, and I am not that. All, all I am is I am a voice in the wilderness. I am sent to go ahead to prepare the way, to prepare the way uh, in, uh, in the wilderness, to prepare the way uh, for the coming of Christ, for Christ who is coming after me, who is greater than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to untie. Praise the Lord. So in answer to that question that the Pharisees were asking John the Baptist, it, this is what he answered in uh, John chapter 3, verse 29. He said, he that has the bride is the bridegroom. He, he was speaking of Jesus. He that has the bride is the bridegroom. Is the bridegroom. Uh, but the friend of the bridegroom himself now, John the Baptist, is like the friend of the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which stands and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore, is this my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. He must increase and I must decrease. Jesus must increase and I must decrease. So John the Baptist was identifying to us that Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and the church is the bride. Praise the Lord. So the bride belongs to the bridegroom. And that is why Apostle Paul is saying, I espoused you to one husband. I betrothed you to one husband. I promised you in marriage to one husband. And I am jealous over you with godly jealousy so that I will present you to that one husband. I will present you as a chaste virgin, as a pure virgin. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we see immediately from this verse that it is required of us as a bride of Christ to be pure. That at the moment we shall be presented to Christ, we shall be a chest virgin, spiritually pure, uh, spiritual purity. Praise the Lord. That is free from all evil, free from all guile and from all sin. Praise be to God. That, that is the, 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 the setting that we see in this uh, Second Corinthians chapter 11. So Paul was, was very concerned about the church because he's saying there that he, is, he has some kind of 
concern that just as uh, Satan, the serpent, beguiled Eve, just like Satan beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden, that you might also be deceived in your minds. Uh, perhaps I should go back and read 2 Corinthians uh, so that we uh, can understand. But I fear, verse 3, but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So Paul is saying that uh, he's so concerned that maybe just like Satan, the serpent beguiled Eve in the Garden of Eden, he might also, he might also corrupt the minds of the brethren, corrupt the minds or beguile the minds of the brethren, deceive the minds of the brethren, and take them astray from the simplicity that is in Christ. Take them away from their sincere love for Christ, from their sincere faith, from their genuine attitude of love towards Christ, towards the bridegroom, that the enemy might beguile them, might deceive them and take them away. And he was saying, if you are so easily being taken away, I am concerned, so easily swayed away. I am so concerned uh, about you. I am so concerned that uh, if some people are coming to you and they are preaching a different Jesus and they are bringing to you a different spirit, different from the one you received, they are bringing to you a different gospel, different from the one you received, different from the one by which you were saved, and you appear to be so easily taken away. I am concerned for you. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. Praise the Lord. Amen. And he was speaking about those false, or we call them super apostles, that had come among the church there in Corinth. And they were beguiling the church. And he, he, he went even to give his own testimony. He says, when I came to you, I abased myself, I humbled myself. When I preached the gospel to you, I did not require of you any monetary uh, uh, gain. I did not require from you like these super apostles that have come unto you, that are seeking gain. I, 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 I even robbed other churches in the sense that while I ministered to you, I did not receive anything, you church in Corinth. Instead, the brethren from Macedonia, they took care of my need. And he was comparing himself to those super apostles. Praise the Lord. That is the kind of uh, setting that we are seeing in this uh, book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. But the key thing is this, that Paul is saying, I, I decided at the time of presenting you, you shall be as a pure or a just virgin. That is the key thing. And it is in line with uh, what we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, I think I should go there and read it. Remember that the bride is being prepared for the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is mentioned in the book of Revelations. We shall be reading that maybe in another program. But let me read the one in Ephesians uh, because I'm focusing on the part that says in verse 26 of Ephesians chapter 5. The Bible says, let me begin from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present. We are talking about presenting. Paul said that I may present you as a just virgin to Christ. I espoused you to one husband, and you are to remain true and faithful to that one husband, so that 
I will present you as a chaste virgin, a pure virgin. So the, in Ephesians, he's speaking the same thing, that he might present, that Jesus Christ, his desire is that he might present to himself. It's the Lord Jesus now speaking here, that he might present to himself a glorious church or a radiant church, a shining church, a pure church, a chaste virgin, that he might present to himself a glorious church, just like a young man, a bridegroom that is preparing to, to, to take a bride, a fiancé. He, he is very protective. He wants to receive that bride as pure, as chaste, reserved for him alone, preserved for him alone, away from all other men, away from all defilement, just like it is in the natural. God gives us a picture of the bride and the bridegroom, the picture of marriage to show us the relationship that is there between the church and Christ. And Paul says it's a mystery. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a mystery. He's speaking about the mystery of the church, the ministry of the relationship between the church and Christ. That he might present himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, not having any spot, in other words, spotless, at the time of presenting the church to the bridegroom or to the husband to whom she is espoused, she is to be spotless, having, that is without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. She is to be blameless. She is to be spotless. She is to be stainless. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that is what Apostle Paul is saying. I am jealous over you with godly jealousy because I espoused you to one husband and I desire that I will present to you, present you as a pure virgin, as a chaste virgin. Praise the Lord. Continuing in verse 27 of Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Praise the Lord. So the emphasis I am laying at the beginning here is that our allegiance is to that one husband to whom we are espoused as the church. Our allegiance is to that one bride in Jesus' name. And we must not allow any other different gospel or different spirit or that would sway us away from our allegiance, away from our love, our pure and sincere love for Christ, our pure and genuine faith in Christ. Praise the Lord. In other words, we must keep ourselves pure. And that is one of the reasons we have said before from the Word of God, that God has given uh, those five major ministries, one of the reasons for the five major ministries that the Lord Jesus, when he ascended up on high, he gave five major ministries. Ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 says, when he ascended, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. Praise the Lord. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, a perfect, matured, multi-membered man. That is the church, the body of Christ. And to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Uh, verse 14 is uh, the part I wanted to stress something about. It says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro. The church in Corinth at the time Paul was speaking to them, was 
it was like every man where they came with a different gospel, a different spirit, like they were easily swayed. They were easily tossed by every wind of doctrine. So the Lord Jesus gave those five major ministries that we be no more children, no more spiritual children that are too tossed to and fro and carried about by every wind of doctrine or by the slight of men like those super apostles that were masquerading as uh, true apostles, yet they were not. They were masquerading, presenting themselves as genuine apostles, but yet they were false apostles. And th so they were swaying the church by their cunning craftiness. And they were deceiving the church to receive a different spirit, a different gospel, a different Jesus. They were being taken away from the simplicity that is in Christ. They were being corrupted in their minds the same way that Eve was corrupted by the enemy, by the serpent in the Garden of Eden. And so Paul is so concerned, praise the Lord. And that's why we must embrace these five major ministries as a gift from God that are meant to establish, to ground the church. The Bible says that we are built, we are built the same Ephesians, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, and we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, being the chief cornerstone. So we see those ministries as laying a proper foundation. God takes time through those ministries to lay a firm foundation in our lives, a firm foundation such that uh, we are a building that cannot be swayed, that cannot be swung right and left by the winds, by the storms, by even the slight of deceitful men masquerading as uh, true apostles when they are not, true prophets when they are not. Praise the Lord. Amen. But instead, God's desire that we remain pure, we remain true, we remain uh, uh, with a true allegiance Somebody sang a song about allegiance to the Lamb. Allegiance to the Lamb. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. That we should be a spotless, stainless, and, and faultless at the time of presenting. Uh, there, there is a similar verse again in the book of Jude. I can see, you can see that is my focus this, in this particular program about the time of being presented, Jude verse 24, the Bible says this, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, our God is able to keep us from falling, falling away, falling into every deceitful doctrine. He is able to keep us by his power. The Bible says we are kept by the power of God. He keeps us by his power. Praise the Lord. Underneath us are the everlasting arms of the Lord. Amen. He's able to stay us true even in these end times when there are doctrines even of devils, doctrines of all kinds. That, 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 and, and, and even people are itching to hear every new thing that is coming around, that comes around. And the Bible says, unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. is able uh, to present us faultless. That is the Lord speaking there. Unto him is able to present you faultless before his presence of God before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Praise the Lord. And so the focus in this sharing is that we be presented at the time of presenting during that time of the marriage supper of the Lamb, which we shall be sharing from in another program, the marriage supper of the Lamb. At that point of being presented, 
We are to be faultless. We are to be without spot. We are to be without stain. Paul calls it presented as a just virgin to Christ, as a pure virgin to Christ, pure from all evil, from all defilement, from all pollution, from all spiritual pollution, including pollution of false doctrines, false teaching. Praise the Lord. He is able to present us. He is able to keep us from falling, falling to any kind of teaching, falling to any kind of spirit, falling to any kind of gospel, but instead to remain true, to remain faithful, to remain in the simplicity of Christ, that at the time we are being presented, we are faultless. Praise God. I encourage you, dear of you, to know that the Lord is able to keep you by his own power. Praise God. So we want to conclude with a prayer in Jesus' name. I want us to pray in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you for what you are saying to us in this time. We want to give you glory and praise that you are speaking expressly to the church, O oh God, about these end times when there, the days are evil and there is all manner of defilement, spiritual pollution in the spirit realm. O oh God, there are all manner of doctrines, false doctrines that can sway the believer away from the simplicity of Christ. We are praying our Father in Jesus' name that you shall keep us. You shall stay us on course. You shall stay us on the true gospel. You shall stay us in allegiance to the Lamb. You shall stay us, O oh God, pure, that at the moment we shall be presented, we shall be as a pure virgin, a chaste virgin. In the name of Jesus, we want to thank you, O oh God, for the Holy Spirit that you have given to us to help us, O oh God, in our walk in these end times. We thank you for the power of God that is able to keep us. And so I pray for the viewer in that they shall stay true to the Lord Jesus Christ in their faith, in their love for the Lord. Thank you, Father. I pray that you meet the viewer at their point of need in the name of Jesus. I pray, O oh God, that you shall preserve their lives pure and holy and without blemish in the name of Jesus. So visit the viewer, O oh God, and the listener and bless them. I thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just in case you have listened to this program and you're not born again, you don't yet know Jesus Christ in a personal way, you don't have a relationship with him yet, you are not yet part of the bride of Christ by being born again, I want to pray with you. You feel in your heart this is a moment to give your life to Jesus. Just pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to thank you that you left heaven, you came to this world, you came because you loved me, you came to seek me. As a lost sinner, I come to you today. I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me of every sin in my life. I ask you to wash me in your precious blood and to save my soul. I receive you into my heart to be my Lord and Savior. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. If you have prayed that prayer the first time in faith, I want to tell you you are born again. I want to tell you that you have become a child of Christ, a child of God, and you are part of the bride of Christ uh, from this day. So go to a church where you can be taught the word of God and you can grow in faith among other believers. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. In Jesus' name, amen.